On today's episode, battle lines are drawn in the global chip industry. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Every age can be defined in engineering terms by the critical materials they relied on. The 19th century was an age of steel, the essential technology for large buildings, bridges, railroads, and eventually automobiles. The 20th century was defined by polymers and by copper, the critical technology that enabled the electrification of the world and the birth of the mass consumer society. The new Super Walkman, indisputably the world's smallest cassette player. So far in the 21st century, the critical material is silicon, or more specifically, integrated circuits. ICs have evolved from simple logic gates, op amps and timers to modern systems on a chip in form factors small enough and at costs low enough to allow their integration into everything from nuclear weapons to smartphone charging cables. Those that control the supply of integrated circuits have considerable control over the global economy. Now that kind of control has inevitable political consequences, and with the serious disruption in the semiconductor supplies due to COVID-19, the post-COVID global semiconductor environment will define economic growth for the next several decades. Pre-COVID, the industry was dominated by Taiwan, accounting for over $100 billion in annual sales, with a single company, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, accounting for over 50% of the global market in advanced processors. TSMC and Korea's Samsung have near control over the global advanced chip market. With advanced semiconductors needed for almost every consumer, commercial, industrial, and military application, control of integrated circuits has a powerful geopolitical dimension. The Biden administration's new Chips and Science Bill launches a 10-year, $40 billion program for semiconductor manufacturing on American soil. Concurrent with the bill, American producers Qualcomm and Global Foundries announced a $4 billion investment to produce semiconductors domestically as well. Now, the investments are huge, but from an engineering perspective, there are two critical takeaways. One is who manufactures the semiconductors, and the other is in the size of the semiconductor gates themselves. Now, the first factor is important. Starting in the early 80s, excess manufacturing capacity in semiconductors created a contract manufacturing industry, allowing a generation of integrated circuit design firms to focus on IP and outsource the actual chip production. According to market research firm Trendforce, half of the world's IC revenue comes from these fabulous companies, specifically from three firms, Qualcomm, Broadcom, and NVIDIA. Heavyweights like Samsung and TSMC not only design integrated circuits, but they manufacture them as well in Asia. Both the United States and the People's Republic of China have implemented major policy changes to drive investment in domestic foundry capability to reduce reliance on foreign sources. Taiwan, the nation dominant in global supply, is important enough to Western economies that that country's foundry base represents a silicon shield, meaning Western nations are at risk should the nation be militarily overrun by the People's Republic of China. Development of domestic capabilities is a significant national security issue for China and the US. But the second factor that's essential is the size of the MOSFET semiconductor gates or junctions that defines processor power and memory capacity. Historically, this was gauged by physical size in nanometers, referred to as the technology node or process node. Smaller numbers mean greater circuit density, although today's process node numbers refer to a generation of chips, not a specific gate length or pitch. This makes it difficult to directly compare semiconductors made by different companies based on process node nomenclature. From a manufacturing and engineering perspective, demanding devices such as smartphones and laptops require faster, more power efficient process nodes such as 22, 16, 14 and 10 nanometers, and single digit nodes are entering production now. But a huge volume of chips are consumed by industries that function well with trailing edge technology such as 45 or 90 nanometers, especially the automotive industry. For automakers, older technology chips are perfectly adequate for most body and chassis control functions such as climate control and power assists, and are cost effective. But foundries that are switching to advanced technology nodes to serve the high-tech markets can yield more devices per silicon wafer at the smaller node size, and are reluctant to continue to invest in older, lower technology factories. In the meantime, the chip shortage continues. The booking lead time for automotive manufacturers for dedicated semiconductors has stretched from 12 weeks to a year, and the research firm reports that several OEMs are exploring bookings at larger node tier two foundries over a year in advance. The chips are not only mission critical in automaking, they represent an increasing proportion of production cost. 
According to Intel, in 2019, 4% of the bill of materials of the average car was represented by semiconductors. The company expects that to grow to 20% by 2030. The market for automotive chips alone will grow from $50 billion to $115 billion in 2030. The market is huge and the investment decisions and political maneuverings of major manufacturing nations in Asia, America and Europe may decide where the planet's mass consumer goods are manufactured in the middle of the century. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.